Hey guys, so for today's video I'm going to be answering another one of your questions. Today's question comes from Max Baritza Smith and he asks What are your thoughts on mobile at the moment? What do you think of efforts to occupy the open source mobile place like Firefox OS and Ubuntu Touch? Okay, so that's a particularly interesting question. Um, namely because you've made a particularly big omission in asking it and that's about Android. Of course Android is an open source operating system based of course on Linux. In fact it's open source enough that it's listed on distrowatch.com and it's actually increased in ranks quite highly. Uh, now the version that is listed on distrowatch.com is a distribution called Android x86 I think it's called I could be wrong on that that, that exact name uh, and it's the PC port of Android yes you can run Android on your PC in fact there is a tutorial video uh, on this very channel where I talk about that um, and yeah uh, Android is uh, released under an open source license I can't remember the exact one but there you go and of course the Amazon um, operating system that they use on their mobile t on their tablets and their their mobile devices is uh, it's an Android based OS but it's um, based on Android as well um, so to say that open source has made efforts to make a space in the open source world uh, in, in the mobile world I think it's fair to say that um, open source has been successful in finding a place in uh, in the mobile world. Um, that being said, I do have my criticisms of Android. I think that it's a little, little clunkier than it needs to be. I think that it does push the eye candy maybe a little bit too much. And, um, uh, and, and I think it would do a little bit uh, better to, to make it a bit more snappier as well. Get rid of those those animation those transitional animations but then again that's me and I kind of feel that I'm not an eye candy fan I'm not a fan of having these uh, desktop transitions in general uh, simply because it just it feels like it slows down the system even when it doesn't actually necessarily slow down the system I don't like the fancy graphics anyway because it it's that sort of subconscious element as well uh, I've got a computer that's fast enough to run Compiz, uh, Kwin all the fancy um, window managers at, at full capacity yet I choose to run either like cinnamon with all the graphics of uh, graphical effects turned off or even sometimes LXDE simply because that snappiness that instantaneous um, out of the way type of desktop environment is, is something that I absolutely adore that is possibly something that is is not going to be um, agreed upon through through most say mobile and even desktop users it's probably something uh, that, that only myself and and perhaps maybe more intermediate slash advanced computer users might 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 agree with I don't know and what are your thoughts guys uh, leave your thoughts in, in the comment section below on that um, now that there, there are um, there are plenty actually of, of, of open source um, uh, you know very predominant open source apps available um, for uh, for Android as well. Uh, the ones that come immediate to mind are the Wikipedia one, of course Firefox. Now Firefox doesn't have that big a share of the mobile market and I'm actually very surprised at this because what Firefox have done and what Google Chrome have decided not to do, it's not that they can't do it or that they, it's that they won't do it, um, but Firefox allows many of the extensions that are available on its desktop release to be also available on its um, on its mobile release. So you've got programs or you've got add-ons like Ghostry, um, Adblock, Plus, um, uh, the LastPass uh, password manager, and all of those kind of um, add-ons you can actually use on Firefox, whereas um, whereas the Google Chrome that's available on Android, uh, it doesn't allow very many extensions to run at all. And this is this is a little this is a little interesting. I think maybe it might have something to do with with the Google Chrome being sort of. It, uh, almost a part of the Android operating system and it, it it's saying or, or, or it implying or pushing its users to perhaps install apps rather than uh, browser add-ons but I like the way that, that Firefox allows you that element of choice there and it's a bit of a shame that Firefox hasn't made greater waves in the um, in the the mobile browsing market um, but uh, and I'm talking about the browser that runs on Android now not Firefox OS and um, but yeah, the Firefox browser is is my browser of choice for mobile and desktop platforms at the moment. Um, and and add-ons is 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 mainly because of it. Is it, it it runs add-ons particularly well. It can do things with add-ons that Google Chrome again won't do. Not that Google Chrome can't do. The Google Chrome won't do because uh, a lot of times it wants 
uh, it wants applications to conform to its way of thinking or its way of doing things, um, which is again, uh, I guess my, my biggest overarching criticism of uh, Android is is beyond the eye candy and the clunkiness is that it's a little bit too attached to Google. Now I like Google. Google's not a bad company. It's not a bad company politically. It's not a bad company in terms of the service it's off service it offers its users. In fact. Like even just looking at buying up the disk space on um, on say Google Drive, if you ever thought of, of of expanding the size of your Google Drive, not that you'd need to because it gives you 15 gig for free, and that doesn't even you know account to the file size of Google Documents. That's just additional things like videos and images. Um, but if you've ever thought about expanding your Google Drive, you can get uh, a crazy amount of um, disk space for about is it three dollars or three pounds a month. Uh, which is by far the cheapest cloud service available. So, uh, Google, in a, in a way, they're a bit sort of they're, they're they're running ahead, and I don't think that that's necessarily best for the consumer because it allows Google to then take advantage of the consumer in ways that we might not necessarily willingly consent to. Whereas with a lot of open source applications, of course, they are less focused on shifting out uh, as many units and selling as much product as possible, but rather catering to uh, the needs of, of, of users like me and you. And that's seen no clearer than in Mozilla, where um, with the Firefox browser, is that you can see that there are little things that have done to make it more usable to the end user, rather than have to conform, that where other browsers like Google Chrome have conformed to what effectively will make Google more money, where of course, um, Mozilla is a non-profit organization. It's, it's not even a proper company, which is particularly interesting. Now, that being said, I do wish that Firefox OS would make a bit more of a space in the uh, in the mobile world but I can't see um, many mobile platforms now willingly adopting it something would have to change maybe um, it, Firefox OS might be able to make a place on budget uh, smartphones that's kind of what I've heard through the grapevine and if you can do that now if you can pick up a smartphone for 30 to 50 quid and that comes with Firefox OS then I think that that would be that'd be certainly a phone that I'd be interested in as well because I'd be willing to to check away maybe thirty to fifty quid on a phone that I'm not entirely over the moon about, um, but but also Firefox OS again it's it's because it comes from a non-profit organisation rather than a profit making company like Google Firefox OS is is likely to offer you a few more choices uh, than than um, than Android um, and again Android is open source and it's not beyond the realms of possibility for it to be forked or it has been forked it's been forked by Amazon but it's not impossible that it might be forked by another company but the problem is is when it comes to um, mobile operating systems is that um, it's going to be near impossible to get anyone to install an operating system on uh, their tablet or their phone that d hasn't come pre-installed with it. It's a difficult process. It involves rooting it. it you can potentially end up bricking your phone, which uh, is something no one wants to do. I don't even root my Android device, um, my, my Android tablet, because I don't like the, uh, you know, call it call it you know a Linux user's superstition, but we don't root unless we r really absolutely have to. And... Um, and I think in order to, to you know, because I, I wouldn't mind running Debian on my uh, on my Google Nexus 7. And I know you can potentially, but I don't want to risk, you know, basically messing it up. It's a nice tablet. I, you know, I get some good use out of it. And to be honest, the Android operating system, it's it's pretty darn good, really. It's it's, it, you know, like I say, it, I've got some criticisms of it. It does hail the almighty Google perhaps a little bit too much. But at the end of the day, it's an open source operating system with many open source options. Um I uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty damn happy with it. Um, for those of you that are unaware, that even though the Google Play Store is uh, it's a commercial um, app store for your for your mobile device, uh, you can actually pick up a uh, software repository which is also available on Android called called F Droid, and you can pick it up at f droidorg I'll put a link to it down in the description. I've even made a video talking about it on this channel. And this is a software repository with only free and open source software available, uh, or sometimes even the free and open source versions of um, software that's uh, available in the App Store, but with proprietary components. And there are actually some interesting things in the F Droid shop, um, things like. Um, the open source equivalent of Google Maps, which I think is, is it called OpenStreetMap? 
uh, and OpenStreetMap is actually really quite good actually it's it's considered the Wikipedia of maps I I don't know if I, I have already but if I haven't I'm going to try and do a video about it as well uh, it's maybe not as as featureful as um, as Google Maps or when I say Google Maps I'm really sort of re referring to Google Street View more than anything else but then again it's not gonna be <laughs> because Google Street View is, is is a little bit crazy in terms of, of, of what it's managed to achieve there um, but for people that just need maps and maybe a little bit of information about a, a place they might be visiting open stream maps not bad so um, and that's available again on Android apps you can even get the Tor browser uh, which goes under the name Orbot I think um, and you can also get that available as well through the free and open source um, F-Droid uh, repositories. I don't know if you can get it through the, the Google Play Store, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Uh, you can also pick up things like WordPress ad administrators and things like that. That's, again, some open source software that's made it into the, uh, into the mobile space. Um, what else is there? I mean, there's Twidair. I've done a done a video about that. That's um, that's used by a good number of people. Five hundred thousand, I think it is. Uh, and considering it's an alternative client, that's that's not bad. Um, I'm just going to have a look through some of my apps now at this point, uh, just to see. Oh, I've got K Canine Mail, um, which K9 is in the letter K, the number nine. That's a that's that's a pretty good. Um, alternative to the Gmail application that comes with Android as well. Yeah, you can get the Tor browser for uh, for Android pretty easily, um, and it comes through the um, F-Droid repositories. I don't know if you can get it in, in. I think you might be able to get it in the Google App Store as well, actually. Um, you can get all kinds of things like calendars, uh, office suites, all that kind of stuff in the, the F-Droid store. VLC, actually, is, is a program that has been ported over to Android, which I found uh, very, very useful for playing file types that are maybe a little bit unusual if you stumble across them on the Internet, um, and, and you might struggle to play them with your traditional Android player that comes bundled with the operating system. Uh, VLC uh, is, a very again, a very useful program. Um, there's Zabba, uh, which is a uh, XM... Uh, PP client, uh, which is what I use uh, when I do my uh, Google Hangouts chats. Um, uh, and feel free to add me on Google Hangouts on this channel here, uh, because, you know, why the hell not? Um, and, uh, yeah, I think that's probably about it. I got Firefox. The File Explorer is actually some of the fi file explorers that are available on F-Droid are... Uh, are pretty neat as well. Uh, oh, there's Yayak, Y-A-A-I-C, which is the um, an IRC client, a free and open source IRC client available for Android. Um, again, so there's a lot of, there's, there's, there's so, so many um, open source applications that are available uh, on the Android platform. And many of these are ones that people um, will actually um, disregard a proprietary client in favor of these open source alternatives. And they do gather a fair bit of momentum. Um, but I think the biggest place where, um, where where open source has made a space in the mobile world is um, is in the operating systems itself. Is in the fact that Android is an open source um, operating system. That being said, it does raise a little bit of a question. I mean, open source has traditionally been um, a, a, a rebellion against um, traditional corporate interests. And Android being a prime example of how open source has actually managed to turn a pretty nice corporate profit. So, um, so it is worth bearing in mind that open source in, in and of itself isn't necessarily um, the, uh, the, sh the shunning of, 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 of corporations in general, uh, but rather... Um, sort of making corporations work in a way that perhaps w might benefit the consumer as well a little bit more and make make the marketplace a little more consumer focused and a little more choice focused as well um, but then again you know and of course we have seen one or two forks from the Android operating system but um, the uh, big alternatives of course being Firefox OS and Ubuntu Touch uh, they are different from the ground up now, on the basis of Ubuntu Touch, I've not come anywhere near pretty much any Ubuntu Touch devices. In fact, I'm not even sure if any of the Ubuntu Touch devices are out yet. And I think Ubuntu and Canonical are making a little bit of a mistake um, going down this road. Um, I, th I think that they're going into a saturated market now. I think Firefox is going to struggle, but I think Firefox might be able to find a small place among the budget phones. 
I don't know what Ubuntu Touch is going to do. Is it going to fight for the, the budget market like Firefox OS? Or or is it going to be something else? Because, I mean, I'm talking about I'm talking about Android here. I'm talking about um, Firefox OS. And, of course, I'm talking about Ubuntu Touch. Of course, there's um, iOS as well. And, and iOS is a pretty well-known and, 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 and you know, it's 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 pretty big. It's a, it's a bigger player as any of them. And... Um, as a, certainly a bigger player as Android, really, in this in this capacity, and that's a big competition that is certainly not open source. Um, so, when we're looking, you know, there's a lot of competition there. There's a lot of competition, and Ubuntu wants to move in. And what can it really offer anyone that hasn't, that, you know, that that hasn't already been on the table and hasn't already been developed and is in active use? Um, I would really like to know um, because I, I, I've looked on the website before making this video and it, it basically says to me, pick up Ubuntu Touch because it can do everything the other guys can do. We're just a little bit late to the party. Um, maybe Ubuntu Touch can pull something out of the bag. If Ubuntu Touch can, can um, have access to the full Linux Ubuntu repositories, then that's enough to make my ears perk up and that's perhaps might make me inclined to pick up an Ubuntu Touch. But I've also got to understand that, like I say, Ubuntu Touch is going into a very saturated market. Is the operating system even going to last? Canonical and Ubuntu Touch, again, these are open, this is an open source project, but Canonical is still a, a corporation even in the same vein as Google. Um, so it's it's not like there's that much of an ideological difference either. The only difference that I could possibly fathom, and I don't even know or possibly even think that this is likely to happen, is that Ubuntu Touch will have access to the Ubuntu Linux repositories. If it does, then you've kind of possibly maybe got my attention if you can prove that it's an operating system that's going to be around in a couple of years' time. I don't really want to buy an Ubuntu Touch phone only for it to, uh, you know, shut up shop and stop working in a couple of uh, years' time. Uh, I don't really want to get used to a new operating system on my phone. I don't really want, you know, it's it's... I don't know, that's just my thoughts on it as well. I think Ubuntu Touch is, is, quite frankly, I think it's doomed to fail. But maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Um, and also, I can't see Ubuntu Touch really being that cheap as well. I think if you're going to badger phone companies in developing for an outside underdog OS, they're not going to do it without some kind of fiscal compensation in there. And I, I think that just having seen the market work that they the way they do, I think that Ubuntu Touch phones are going to be unnecessarily overpriced. I've seen a lot of um, Linux desktop machines become um, unnecessarily overpriced because companies don't want to take that risk. And if they're going to take that risk, then they're going to um, up the profit margins, which in turn makes it even riskier and more likely to fail because who's going to pay uh, more money simply to have uh, Linux pre-installed on a, on a desktop machine. Even a Linux user will just buy a regular desktop machine and then put Linux on top of it. Um, and, and I have seen a lot of Linux boxes actually be significantly more expensive than, than a Windows desktop counterpart, um, which is which is ridiculous, which is crazy. Um, but there you go. So that's just a few thoughts on um, open source making a uh, space in the mobile world. I think that it's successfully done so, uh, and I think that it will continue to do so. Um, and, I, and I hope that it will have uh, some degree of success. What I really would like to see, and I would absolutely adore the day this happens, is to see an open source um, social media platform take off. Unfortunately, social media is a little bit more money hungry, um, and 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 maybe it's it, you know I think open source will have a real hard time there because I think you need some seriously sharp teeth to succeed in making a social media platform uh, at all and make it successful at all. And I think that um, because there isn't that 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 money interest um, and and that that lucrativeness in open source that you often get with um, with with the uh, corporate side of things, uh, I think that there might be a little less motivation and a little less advertising and a little less money just being thrown around by any kind of open source networks because um, the uh, interestingly enough, I think it's rainbow-dash.net. If you're a brony, you're going to love that site. It's basically um, a Twitter for for My Little Pony. But the interesting thing about it is that it uses something called GNU Social. GNU Social is an open source 
clone of Twitter effectively and it's really quite good and it allows you to effectively turn a website into a Twitter clone and um, and and I really like the the way that that looks and the way that that's put together and again it, it kind of follows uh, social media in the same kind of spirit as open source where it takes a, an item um, like social media in this instance and status updates and and it um, it hands it back to the user. It says, here's one thing that this piece of software is going to do. And it's going to try and do this one thing really, really well. And then you can apply it or run it alongside other pieces of software. Um, and, and those other pieces of software you can choose as well. Um, and it's a little less overbearing. Um, so, yeah, if you want to see open source social media in action, uh, rainbow-dash.net. That's a rainbow dash is in D-A-S-H, not the uh, hyphen. Um, okay, so that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Again, if you've got any questions you would like me to answer, feel free to ask them down in the comments section below. I'm trying to answer as many questions as possible, and this is actually kind of fun. So anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now. So this is just the end slate, just to let you guys know uh, what other kind of projects I'm working on. For those of you that don't know, I have a, a second channel where I do more informal, casual type stuff. And I also have a gaming channel, so if you guys are into that kind of stuff, uh, you might want to check those out. Also, if you want to ask me any questions or just have a chat about whatever it is that I've been talking about in this video, feel free to check out my Twitter and my Tumblr as well. I spend a fair amount of time on them. Toodaloo!